to our live election coverage here on MSNBC. The polls have just closed in Alaska. I live for these words. The Alaska Senate race right now, uh, NBC News is calling this too early to call between incumbent Democratic Senator Mark Begich and his Republican challenger, Dan Sullivan. There's also a tight Alaska governor's race that we've been watching very close. Right now, the NBC News projection in the Alaska governor's race is that this one is also too early to call. The Republican incumbent there is Sean Parnell. He's running against an independent named Bill Walker. He had previously been running against both an independent and a Democrat. The independent and the Democrat decided to form a unity ticket to run against Sean Parnell. Interestingly, the independent and Democratic unity ticket endorsed by Sarah Palin, even though Sean Parnell was her Republican lieutenant governor. In terms of other undecided races at this hour, Connecticut governor. This is still a race that's being called too close to call. Look at that, less than two thirds of the vote counted yet. Uh, in Connecticut, Dan Malloy, the Democratic incumbent facing Republican Tom Foley. Also the Colorado governor's race. This one being called too close to call. 85% of the vote in. Republican former Congressman Bob Beaupre uh, narrowly leading John Hickenlooper, the Democratic incumbent but again, 85% of the vote there, and that's too close to call in Colorado. Another governor's race, which I should have mentioned earlier when I was talking about the outstanding races, uh, the Hawaii governor's race, with just over a third of the vote in, the Democrat David Ige, who ousted Neil Abercrombie, the sitting governor, in a Democratic primary this year. Uh, right now, he's at 53% over Duke Aona, who's the Republican. Uh, but this is being called too early to call uh, in Hawaii. So we've got a number of races uh, that are still outstanding. One of the things that I'm going to be watching for in Alaska uh, is to see what happens with minimum wage. Minimum wage has passed now. Yeah. Uh, raising the minimum wage has passed everywhere that they've put it on the ballot since the year 2000. We're up to more than a dozen of those now. Also, Alaska may legalize pot tonight, and not just legalizing medical marijuana. They the may be the full Colorado deal. The full Colorado, the full Washington, and now the full Oregon, which also voted to legalize pot tonight. It'll be interesting to see both if that passes uh, and by what kind of margin, if that does anything to turn out. I should mention also D.C., Washington, D.C. also voted tonight on legalizing pot. Um, it passed in D.C. Good. Now is the question. That's adorable. Whether or not, whether or not Congress adorable, allows DC. them to make you their own law. Yeah, the second Let's class citizens of not Washington, really D.C. So Let's we... bring in Tamron Hall with a look at our exit polling, our last call of the night from Tamron. Thank you. Hey there, guys. So uh, many people have asked what's behind this wave tonight. Why did the Republican Party fare so well? Our NBC News exit poll tells us that there were three big factors Chris, driving this outcome. Let's look at the first factor here. Republicans across the country, if you discussed on the panel, tried to tie the Democratic opponent to President Obama and his policies, and it seems to have worked here. The president's approval at this point, 44% in 2014. That is down 10 points from when the president won re-election only two years ago. Now, voters were also negative about government in general. Look at these numbers, a majority 54% said the government is doing too much, taking on things better left to businesses and individuals. And the third reason that we found in our exit poll information, the GOP did so well because of the economy and it's still weighing on the minds of so many people. Of course, it was a rough situation in 2008 with the Great Recession, but the sentiment right now, still a lot of negativity with 70% saying the economy is not in good shape. So there you have, Chris, food for thought. Three reasons from the exit poll information, the data we received from the voters who came out and voted today. Thank you, Tamara, for that late report. Now, let me go to uh, Maria. You seem ready to talk about that. <laughs> but that's a conservative message. This time, it's a conservative electorate. Right. It's a midterm electorate with a well, conservative midterm, message. Well, exactly right. But I think one of the stories that is, we'll be able to unfold a little bit more, and Reverend, you can talk a little about this. This is the very first time that we have an election where the Voting Rights Act has been stripped. And what are those consequences? I was in uh, Gainesville, Florida a week and a half ago, where 50,000 students on campus, on the University of Florida, their voting booth had been eliminated. Hmm. What is that going to do when we actually start talking about voting lines, how long, the time tax, everything? This is a very, and this is, I think this is a topic that we're going to have to unpack much more f further, but it's an opportunity for us to really have a conversation of, yes, it was definitely the, your usual midterm white Republican older voters that went out to vote, but it was also the very first time that you didn't have the voting rights act in effect. Reverend? No, I think that you're going to have any number of factors, but the, the first thing is we should not be in denial. We lost tonight. There was a wave. Now, why 
uh, I think we will have to unpack, as Maria said. I think the Voting Rights Act is a part, I think, uh, uh, that uh, a lot of the running away from the president is a part. I think a lot of the economy is a part. Because none of these races, in my opinion, the, the critical ones, were that uh, uh, huge uh, a gap in terms of the vote that you couldn't factor in a lot of things. They're very close races for the most part. I think a couple of them uh, were, were uh, huge gaps or, or big gaps, but for the most part they were close enough that any one of these things could be factored in. The real question is going to be how do the Democrats respond to that? Because the Democrats, in my opinion, were not as aggressive as they should have been on voting rights. They certainly wasn't aggressive on defending a lot of the president's policies. And does the Republicans overplay their hand? Uh, if I uh, were a betting man, and I'm not, <laughs> I would bet tonight that some of the zealots in the party are going to see this as a license to drive a winning car over the cliff. Did you and catch the language used by Cory Gardner in his victory speech? I am the tip of the spear. Right. Yes. That's not exactly, let's work That's together. Right. Yeah. That's conservatory. The right. tip of the spear. Do we have the spear? To the, to compromise with you. To that point, uh, do we have the soundbite ready? Actually, let me ask the co control room. Uh, at this point, we, one of the things we've been talking about is what the Senate's going to behave like under Mitch McConnell, right. majority mm -hmm. leader, and how they're going to work with President Obama, and whether or not this is all about governing, which I think is nonsense to expect from this Republican Party. This this is what Senator Ted Cruz of Texas That's said great. on Fox News yes. tonight yeah, well, uh, in terms of what is going to happen in the Senate now that it's under Republican control. Kumbaya, everybody. <laughs> I think that is one of the biggest differences we're going to see with a Republican majority is finally meaningful oversight of the Obama administration from the U.S. Senate. For six years, Harry Reid has been President Obama's most important protector, and he shut down the Senate. There's been essentially no oversight. I hope we begin serious, careful, systematic, sober hearings examining executive abuse, regulatory abuse, lawlessness, abuse of power, whether it is the IRS wrongfully targeting citizens, whether whether it is, is the debacle of, of Benghazi and four Americans who lost their lives and why more was not done to save them, or whether it is the lawlessness that has pervaded Obamacare as the president and the executive branch has, has tried to pick and choose which laws to follow. I hope we see serious Senate oversight on all of those fronts. I rest my case. No, it's okay? not. It I rest no, my that's case. Him. That's this him. Guy, this guy is bad news. It's him, He's it's Joe Joni McCarthy. It's He's Cody Joe Gardner. McCarthy. Yeah. Let me just tell you, I'm just going to go through what he said there, which is really untrue. Yep. First of all, regulatory abuse to this guy means any regulation. Uh, lawlessness. What's he talking about? Lawlessness. Abuse of power. These are these are impeachable offenses. Words, Where's yeah. this lawlessness coming from? What's this? Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Uh, the man makes these McCarthyite charges against everybody. This is what he does. I don't think he's typical. If I thought he was a typical politician, I'd give up paying attention to politics. I don't think that's what most politicians are. You guys sit around and say all Republicans are as bad as the worst no, Republicans. No, 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 These no, are no. the worst. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying that he will substan substantively call the shots yep. in the direction the Senate chooses to behave because he has before, because he did with the shutdown, and now he's going to be running for president, which is going to give him even more incentive to, and it's going to give the other people, like Rand Paul and people trying to outflank him and Marco Rubio also incentive to rush to you the right. You think they'll all be magnetized to the most extreme destructive position? They're yes. going to win a primary. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but They're that just seems like... speaking to Republican voters until for but a maybe long time. Anyone, anyone of you, I mean, we're all trying to figure out the future. Does anyone here, we're just pundits, does anyone think that this man, who we just heard, <laughs> can be the Republican nominee for president? Does anyone seriously believe you? No, but I think he's oh, no, just put your hands here. But Chris, <laughs> it's possible. Yes, I do believe it's possible. Jesus. I, but Chris, I do think he can. Yeah. Oh, my God. You, think, the worst, you live the worst case scenario. <laughs> no, I just, what do you think I, it's going to be? I think that he can shape how the nominee is chosen, and he could possibly be the nominee, but I think he can set the climate. The narrative, that that's exactly right. everybody's going to have to debate right. in his climate. I mean, he was just And asked, I think that's a yeah. problem. I mean, he was just asked whether or not he He's supported for Mitch McConnell yeah. for majority leader. He couldn't say yes. Right. Here's, I'm going to blow your minds. Let me go back to Howard. Okay. Howard, help me out here. <laughs> is it this bad? Am I surrounded Wait, by the bad news? Lines. Howard, is it this bad that, that Ted Cruz could be I'm gonna the break, nominee? I'm going to break the tie here I think it's a tie uh, <laughs> Blow I, I think, okay I think that Ted Cruz 
is 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 Mitch McConnell's worst nightmare. So. Uh, Mitch McConnell's great night tonight is that he's now the majority leader. And by the way, let me also point out that Alaska matters and Louisiana matters because both Tom Daschle and and George Mitchell, two former majority leaders that I spoke with tonight, said that there's more difference between 51 and 54 than just three. Mm -hmm. uh, because if it's 51, as Lawrence O'Donnell was pointing out, any one senator, at all prima donnas to begin with, any one senator can hold up the majority leader, imprison him or her. Yeah. If, if they get that extra three, that's going to make a big difference for McConnell. But even with that, McConnell's going to be presiding over a Senate in which there are at least three Republican presidential candidates. Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, Marco Rubio, maybe even Rob Portman. Yeah. The, the dynamics of this are going to be as follows. Ted Cruz is going to be grandstanding every minute of the day. He's going to be making life miserable for Mitch McConnell. Rand Paul has already told Mitch McConnell, I know this because Rand Paul told me this, that he, he, he Rand Paul, wants Mitch McConnell to try to do a deal on immigration. He's going to try to push and help and protect the flank of Mitch McConnell if he can on immigration. Would Paul be able to do that against Ted Cruz? I don't know. Mitch McConnell gave a very nice speech tonight about how he wants to prove to the president that he can be bipartisan. Mitch McConnell spent a whole career not being that way. Uh, can he rise to the occasion? Will he take on the Ted Cruz's of the world? I think that's a huge question. And, and if I had to bet, I would say that McConnell will gingerly try to do it. And they'll have, he'll have a confrontation with Ted Cruz early on. I don't know how it's going to come. But McConnell's guy, I predict that McConnell will do that. It may, he may blow up the Senate in the process, which he certainly won't want to do, but he's not going to have any other choice. Otherwise, Ted Cruz is going to run circles around. Who are you betting on? Are you betting on? You know these guys real well. I are do. you betting on Mc, McConnell being the guy we heard tonight? Or the mad dog that just wanted to bring down the house, like Solomon a couple years, uh, six years well, ago? The irony of it is. Ted Cruz, by his obstreperousness and by his 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 his, uh, his drive, may force McConnell, even against his will, to try to play more of the cohesive statesman, because that's the only answer to Ted Cruz. The only answer to Ted Cruz is to civilize the rest of the Senate, <laughs> and, so and and that's the only way to that's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it, and he'll probably have Marco Rubio and Rand Paul on his side as he does it. I mean, the Senate is going to be a fascinating theater of Republican presidential politics uh, with Mitch McConnell in a kind of ringmaster role that I don't think he ever anticipated. May I jump in just for a moment here because we have a yeah. new call to make. This okay. is a governor's race in the great state of Hawaii, which previously had been too early to call. The interesting thing about this Hawaii governor's race is that uh, Abercrombie had been the incumbent governor, Democratic governor in Hawaii. David Ige beat him by something like, by 30-something points Crazy. Yeah. in the Democratic primary primary in Hawaii uh, and then went on uh, in the general election against Republican Duke Aona. This was not one that they knew was the Democrats were necessarily going to run off with, uh, but NBC News now projects that David Ige, uh, the Democrat, who President Obama did campaign for, Hawaii, um. home state, get it? Uh, and he will be the projected winner in the Hawaii governor's race. Uh, there's lots more ahead, uh, including some, out some outstanding races, including the Connecticut and Colorado governor's races, um, Alaska Senate and governor both too early to call right now, and as promised, I have something that will blow your mind. And I haven't been able to tell you yet, but I will in just a second. And I swear, if you don't look it up in the commercial break, it will blow your mind when we come back. Okay? Okay.